Hey YouTube, it's Demetri, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about data science in quantitative finance. I'm gonna give you a few perspectives here, and then I'm gonna give you some awesome free resources here at the end of this. So wait to the end to get a few little announcements there. So data science has become this big topic, and it's become quite blurry and messy, and there's a lot of different terminology now kind of stemming out of it. So, you know, are you like a ML engineer? You doing ML ops? Are you a data scientist? Uh, now people will tell me, Dimitri, this means this and this means that. And yet when I go online and I look for like job applications, you start finding out that some people think data science uh, is actually data engineering. And some people think data science is actually ML ops or ML engineering. And some people think, you know, ML engineers do the full spectrum, but data scientists just do basic analytics. And I've seen jobs that are literally just analytics. Um, but in quantitative finance as a whole, I think there's a key portion here or a good use case for data science. When I say data science here, I'm going to mean machine learning. Um, yes, AI as well. So AI is just basically automation. I'm not going to get too much into those details as well. But data science has a lot of interesting tools and approaches. But I'm going to put a big red flag and a big warning on this and why I think this is kind of an important aspect to consider which is you should take statistics classes first. So if you are working on a master's degree, could be econometrics, it could be statistics, biostats, uh, quantitative finance, could be anything under the sun that is quantitatively related and you wanna go into quantitative finance um, or you wanna go into even like machine learning and data science, my recommendation is take statistics first there are tons and tons and tons of statistics courses you can take. Uh, but my recommendation is take one probability course and one statistics course. Uh, the statistics course should cover the basic concepts like linear regression. So you should be covering like OLS. Um, you could take an econometrics course, which many of them are really good and cover, you know, OLS, uh, feasible generally squares, um, parametric and non-parametric modeling, depending on the level of courses you take, and they cover some time series and a bunch of other things. But I think statistics and probability theory are that core foundation that really, you know, bake into data science as a whole. And I think once you understand those core fundamentals and you've built the foundation of like, you know, the importance of distributions, um, hopefully they cover things in those courses on the importance of like sampling and probability spaces. I think a lot of schools now kind of skip over these things. They just wave their hands and the sample space, and this is a population. Uh, but really do those foundations, because once you have those core things down, it is far, far easier to do machine learning and data science, um, especially nowadays where a lot of it is more focused on the application side, which I think is excellent. So went to a career fair recently at the University of Michigan. One of the favorite classes of the statistics students and biostat students uh, was a class that was all on... Uh, data science, machine learning applied to real world problems. And they said they got, you know, dirtier data and it was more challenging and the solutions weren't always nice and clean, but it was like a great experience to really get your hands dirty and learn to write reports. And that's excellent because that's what we do in the industry. But I think to really do that, you know, data science, machine learning, hands on experience, uh, often it's more about how do you use a package in a language to do something quickly and there's not a lot of theoretical understanding behind that. And to back that with industry experience here, I find when I work with those with data science backgrounds, it's always about like, how do we do grid search? And how do we look at every possible solution? And how do we, you know, quickly do this and quickly do that? And there's no like stopping and thinking and going through uh, the statistical theory that underlines all of those methodologies and underlines even the problem that you're solving here. So my number one advice is make sure you take a probability and a stats course or an econometrics course uh, before you take machine learning courses or a data science course. It will, you know, make your life far easier and you'll really understand what you're trying to do here. Now, just to give you a few quick examples as well of what we've done in the industry, so things I've seen in my career, uh, I work on the banking side, so not the flashy investing side, but the banking side. And a few of the models that we have seen and used in practice, and I've seen other banks use, uh, fraud's been using machine learning for like, I think, 20 plus years now. So machine learning is really baked into finance. It's been used in finance for many, many years. Uh, even the research behind machine learning on the investing side has been going on for a long, long time. So those are kind of cool areas. Uh, credit risk in itself, so credit scorecard modeling has traditionally been done with logistic regression, which is statistics, 
you can call it machine learning if you want. It's statistics. Uh, and then now we're using a lot of like different types of gradient boosting. So, you know, light GB, so light gradient boosting, uh, XGB and all that stuff. So those sorts of models are calling credit. There are actual real case applications for this. Um, I've seen some ideas and I've taught um, a theoretical class on using neural networks to modeling out uh, default rates for credit card, auto loans and mortgages, those sorts of loan products. So there's a great use case for those. Um, there are actually ways to kind of tear them apart and look at some of the advantages of using a neural net um, versus their methodologies. But again, I've taught these in banked in little classes and brown bags, as we call them at lunchtime. So those are some use cases on that. For some free, awesome, you know, experience, some education, some learning here. Uh, first off here, I just want to point out here, Carnegie Mellon is doing a data science and machine learning finance panel. So I'm giving you my two cents. Take them for what they are. Uh, but CMU is taking some of their grads that went to CMU that graduated and now actually work in quantitative finance doing data science or went out and are doing data science as a whole here. So they're going to give you a different perspective probably than what I have because they are typically, it sounds like from talking to the program a bit, they're actually data scientists in different firms doing data science. And they'll give you a different perspective on that. Uh, that is going to be Thursday, September 29th. So it's free registration. I'll put the link below as well so you can kind of just sign in and see. I really wish I could attend, to be honest with you guys, but I'm going to be flying in the air from Chicago. So I will not be able to attend that. If not, I would be there as well uh, on this virtual event that you can register online for. So really awesome. Uh, the second piece is going to be one of my favorite books on machine learning, which is actually free. Uh, it's called An Introduction to Statistical Learning with Applications in R. And of course, this is what the book looks like. So yes, I have a printed version. I have to have my absolute like paper copy and I need to highlight in it and take notes and read it. Um, but there's a, it's free online and it's by James Witten, Hasty, and Tib Shirani. So I will put a link to that as well because I just have a link on my website with a bunch of other free resources in general, just two of them for this. Uh, there's an introduction to statistical learning link, which I'll put on there. And there's also one on deep learning and the deep learning one is by a uh, good fellow and Bingio, I believe is how you pronounce it. But if you're looking to get into sort of interesting topics, learning machine learning, and you haven't really done it, I think these two books are really good resources to learn this material for free. Um, but it's a good start here to kind of get a foundation as well. Again, I think this book, though, The Introduction to Statistical Learning, uh, does a really good job at coming at it from a stats perspective. So you'll get some of that stats and that theory baked into the machine learning part of it. But that's just my two cents. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.